Good morning and welcome to Mission Control Houston and a new week of the International Space Station Update Hour. We're here with the International Space Station Flight Control Team inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room where Flight Director Tomas Gonzalez Torres is leading the team with help from CAPCOM Rob Hayhurst. On board the space station, the three members of the Expedition 35 crew are more than halfway through their day, which began early for two of them. Commander Chris Hadfield of the Canadian Space Agency and NASA flight engineer Tom Marshburn both started their day yesterday, our time, at 10 p.m. Central in preparation for tomorrow's activities with the SpaceX Dragon. While Russian flight engineer Roman Romanenko stuck to the regular 1 a.m. space station wake-up time. It was video there of uh, some of the Dragon preparations. Uh, Marshburn, Hadfield, and Romaninko launched the space station on December 19th in their Soyuz TMA-07M, which they then docked to the station's ROSVET module on December 21st. That puts them on their 60, uh, excuse me, 97th day in space and their 94th day at the space station. The three have been alone at the station since March 15th when their previous three crew members, Kevin Ford, Evgeny Terelkin, and Oleg Novitsky, left to return home after about 143 days in space. They're not looking forward, uh, they're now looking forward to being joined by uh, three crew members on Thursday when NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy and Russian cosmonauts Pavel Vinogradov and Alexander Misurkin are scheduled to not only launch at 3.43 p.m. Central Time from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, but also dock that same day to the, to the station's Poisk module at 9.32 p.m. This will be the first single day journey to the space station for a crewed vehicle, though the Russians have tested uh, the plan out with several Progress cargo ships recently. NASA TV coverage of the day's events will begin at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on Thursday. And you can get a rundown there of uh, the exact coverage times of all the events. Before the Soyuz arrives, however, the current crew will be bidding farewell to the SpaceX Dragon capsule and its 2,668 pounds of science samples for human research biology and biotechnology studies, physical science investigations, and educational activities. View here of the Dragon on its arrival at the end of the space station's robotic arm, which uh, they'll be using tomorrow to now release it. Marshburn and Hadfield are spending the majority of their day preparing for tomorrow's Dragon departure. They finished loading the last of the cargo into it at 7.20 a.m. this morning. Seeing some video of that here. And uh, they since been in, have been working to prepare the, they since have closed the hatch. Uh, that occurred at 8.09 a.m. And now they're working to prepare the vestibule between the Dragon hatch and the Harmony hatch for the vehicle's undocking. And before wrapping up for the day, they'll also install a control panel in Harmony that's going to allow the team here on the ground to get the common berthing mechanism connecting the vehicle to the space station ready as well. The work to actually undock the Dragon using the space station's robotic arm is scheduled to begin at 3.05 a.m. Central Time tomorrow. NASA TV coverage is going to be in, begin at 3 a.m. Central. And then uh, Hadfield and Marshburn will be using the robotic arm to release the Dragon at 5.56 a.m. The vehicle will complete a series of three departure burns in the 10 minutes that follow that release. and. Uh, the final deorbit burn that will drop the vehicle back into the Earth's atmosphere for its return home is scheduled to take place at 10.42 a.m. Central Time. You can see an uh, animation of that uh, procedure for its, from its undocking to its release here. Again, that uh, deorbit burn scheduled to take place at 10.42 a.m. Central Time, and that's going to lead to a splashdown landing at 11.34 a.m. Central, about 246 miles off the coast of Baja, California. You can see a rundown of those activities here. The ships that will pick up and bring it back to land left yesterday, and they should have the capsule back on land about 30 hours after its return. Then the scientific cargo it's carrying will be returned to NASA that day. 
With all these comings and goings, and with only half the normal crew size, there's not a great deal of time left over, but Marshburn and Hadfield are still managing to squeeze into some scientific work. In fact, last week they completed more than 45 hours of science operations between the two of them. Over the weekend, Hadfield spent some time preparing the CSLM-3 experiment for return to Earth. The full name for that investigation is the Coarsening in Solid Liquid Mixtures 3 experiment. It studies the growth and uh, solidification processes of lead tin solid liquid mixtures that contain small amounts of tin branch-like structures. The final run of that experiment was completed last week. And right before bedtime today, both Hadfield and Marshburn will do some work on the reaction self-test experiment, which allows crew members to monitor the daily effects of fatigue on their performance at the space station. That's what's been going on in space today, and this is Mission Control Houston.